Good morning, everyone. We've got a few more chairs in the back that we can set up if we want, but we've also got a lot of space up front here, and I promise I won't spit. <clears throat> My wife told me I couldn't on Sundays. Every other day of the week, maybe, but we've got plenty of room up front if you do want a chair up front. For those that are new, uh, my name is Tom Hughes. It's my uh, privilege to welcome you to Prairie Bible Church uh, this morning. And this uh, beautiful, wonderful January Sunday morning that we're experiencing in April still. <clears throat> I'm just glad that the snow decided to hold off at least until tonight. and We didn't have to try to push snow again this morning. Uh, as we come together at Prairie Bible Church, we have a wonderful uh, tradition of talking about what Jesus taught us as the two greatest commandments. The first greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And the second greatest commandment Jesus taught us was to love your neighbor as yourself. And in that tone, I would encourage you to stand up and greet one another in the love of Jesus. Thanks again for joining us this morning. I would like to welcome anybody that is new, that is not that is experiencing Prairie Bible Church for the first time. Um, please uh, take this as our gift to you this Sunday morning, a, a gift of worship, and we're glad that you're with us. We hope that you would uh, reach out and let us know that you're here, and we want to welcome you back in the future. And I'm going to start an attendance pad down each side for those that are especially new, but also those that are regular attenders here. If you would sign, just let us know that you're here this morning with us, and then put some contact information. So we've got an email or an address and a phone number so that we can share what's going on in the life of Prairie Bible Church on the email that will come out uh, later this week so we can be praying for one another. The other thing I want to mention is on the back table, um, as we've said in the last couple weeks, we've got some invitation cards. <clears throat> we always have said, and Easter was a wonderful time last Sunday. We had a great uh, attendance, great people celebrating Jesus and the risen Savior. But as we've said, every Sunday is a chance to celebrate that. And we've got literally just some invitation cards back there for Prairie Bible Church. Tell us who we are and where we worship. And if you have a friend, a neighbor, a coworker, or a family member that you think might want to enjoy a Sunday service, please take five or ten of those cards and hand them out. We'd love to encourage people to come with that and give us a chance to uh, grow in our community. And with that, if you would, uh, join me in an opening prayer, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us, this Sunday morning, this chance to come together to worship you. We're so thankful for this space and these people that have all come together. Truly, Lord, it is not an accident. Each person that is here has come for a reason, and we know that you know the reason. We ask that you would help us, one and all, to forget about our past week. Maybe the challenges and the troubles that we've had, the issues that have gone on, the stress that we're under, the concerns that we have. Lord, let us please use this hour to just release, to relax, to focus on you and the gifts that you can give us. Help to refuel us, to energize us, and to let us go out and give your purpose to the world this coming week. We're so thankful for this space. We ask for your blessing upon this service, upon those that have helped to set up this space this morning, upon those that are helping to uh, give us this message that Pastor Craig would be with us, and that you would make this a great time for you. We ask all this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. If you would stand for our first song, Cornerstone.
Please be seated. <clears throat> We've been talking for a few weeks now about life groups. Um, those of you that have been here, <clears throat> life groups are a simple process of small groups, of chances to gather with people that are in Christ, that want to learn more about Jesus, that want get, to gather together more. So I'd like to invite those small group hosts, if they would come forward right now this morning that are going to be leading in our small group hosts. As we talk about that, what we've uh, got on the back table, maybe you notice as you walked in, is there's a sign-up sheet um, with some of those small group hosts that are there to talk about and to have, have an opportunity for everyone to sign up to be in a small group, in what we're calling a life group. And what we've talked about many times is life groups are truly about doing life together. 
man, we're so excited to be able to gather on Sunday mornings and worship together, learn about God, listen to Pastor Craig's message. But we want to carry that out on Monday through Saturday. And the life groups are a way we can do that. And we're hoping that everyone would take an opportunity to really pray about and think what life group you could fit into. So what we want to do this morning is give everybody a chance to put a name with a face. Oh, yeah, there we go. We got about that much cord. I'll hand that over. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is the sign-up sheets are on the back. And we're asking this week and next week that you would consider signing up to be in a life group. And every life group's got a meeting at a different time and a different location. So part of it could be schedules, but part of it is also who's in that life group and there's names on there. So what we were asking the host to do is just be able to put a name with a face so that you may or may not know everybody. So we're going to ask that. And just, just a little bit in the way of instruction too with the signups. If um, you just put uh, one name per line and then if you have an email address for yourself, if you have one for as a couple, that's okay. But one name per line and your email address, that would be very or helpful. Or phone number would be okay too. Or phone number would be good yep. too. Yep. Yep. Am I starting? Yes. All right. You got hey, the mic. I am Lisa Peters, Pastor Craig's wife, Lisa. We are so excited to have uh, this happening again. Um, I love having people in our home, and I love the whole idea of, of uh, just doing life together. So um, I don't even know when ours is. So ours, <laughs> We're going to be meeting on Wednesday oh, nights. Sure. Wednesday, Wednesday night. nights. And I think it's April 25th. If that's a Wednesday April night. April 25th. It, it says on the sheets, by the way, what, what, when they're meeting, where they're meeting. 6.30 uh, Times, maybe? those kind of things. So, uh, yeah, I think. You don't know either. Yes. April 25th. If that's a Wednesday night, we're going to meet at 6.30, 6.30 to 8.00. And we'd love to have you. So what our goal was here is to have a life group host tell when, where, and how they're meeting. And do it in 30 seconds, which yeah. we failed already. <laughs> but it's okay. Hi, I'm Jolene Bowman, obviously. Is this on? Yeah. Can you hear? Obviously, you guys tried to pull a little surprise on us today, so thank you, everybody. <laughs> um, Francis and I are going to host a life group on Wednesday night. I believe it's the 25th. It's the last Wednesday night. We don't know how often. We don't know what we're going to do. I have no clue. It's just six, 7 o'clock. Come. Maybe bring your fishing poles. I don't know. We might eat. We might fish. We don't know what we're going to do. Talk about life. Fish stories. He can tell big fish stories. He can talk a lot. I have no clue. Honestly, just come. If you want to come to our house, we live in North Liberty. And um, there's a place to fish right behind our house. And I, I don't have a plan. But if anybody has a plan and they want to use my house, that's fine too. So we're just going to wing it. Awesome. I'm Randy Rumry. This is my wife, Lisa. Uh, we're thankful that 50 years ago, the Bowmans got married because on Thursday night, we had a board meeting and we were saying, you know, it's the week after Easter is always such a downer and uh, they'll, they, we just won't have many people here. Well, <laughs> the Bowmans brought them in. So, thank you. Yeah. So Lisa and I, uh, are the theme for our uh, Bible study is called Rock the Word. And we're going to rock the Word by starting off each one of our uh, monthly sessions uh, by listening to some kind of a rock tune, country tune, uh, but some kind of a familiar piece of music. And the one that started that off was Stevie Wonder's song, Don't You Worry About a Thing. Mm -hmm. So then we'll take that topic and we'll study what does the Bible say about uh, worry. And um, another uh, one might be Tim McGraw's uh, song, Humble and Kind, and uh, we'll study what the Bible says about being uh, humble and hum what humility is and that type of thing. So we're going to meet on Tuesday nights. That's uh, April 24th is scheduled to be our first meeting. Uh, we think we'll uh, have a Bible study once a month and then maybe uh, every two weeks, uh, every, uh, sort of the uh, two weeks off, uh, we'll meet for something social or perhaps a service type of project. So you're welcome at our ho home in Swisher, and uh, we hope you'll uh, come and join us. We should have a lot of fun. And we think we'll probably start at uh, 7 o'clock, but we're going to be flexible. So uh, once we get together, we'll talk about what you all want to do and uh, go from there. Oh, I do know that I did say our group would probably be, we don't know how often we'd meet, whatever, everybody, but a service project. It could be playing bingo at a care center or making a meal at Ronald McDonald House, but we will do a hands-on with the group at our house. So um, we might do a study like dig deeper into Craig's sermon if we don't think he dug deep enough, <laughs> or we might uh, <laughs> do that one Sunday or one Wednesday night, right, Lisa? Hey, now who gave Jolene the mic back? <laughs> it's my fault. 
<laughs> I'm Megan Hughes, and my husband Tom and I are hosting a life group at our house on Wednesday nights. Currently, kids outnumber adults in our group. Sunday night? Uh, no, yeah, Sunday night. Yeah. Sunday night. I'll take Wednesday, too. Whatever. Okay. No, Sunday night. Sorry. Um, Sunday night. Uh, we have more kids than adults. The uh, concept is kids will go out and ride ponies and chase chickens while we discuss. Um, and, but one of the greatest... Um, uh, experiences we've had with life groups are multi-generational life groups, so we would love to have um, uh, all seasons of life, um, singles, couples, whatever it is. So Sunday nights um, in Fairfax at our place, and if you want to ride a pony, we'll make it happen. <laughs> I want to be here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Ryan Steffens, and uh, my wife Michelle and I will be hosting a life group at our house on Tuesday nights. Um, we just live across the street, so it's not too far from here. Um, we don't really have a theme, we don't really have much of a plan, but Tuesday night's probably 6.30 to start off with, and we'll be flexible from there with whatever works for everybody. That's so not even true. Okay, we have a plan. <laughs> So we're thinking we're going to do a model where the first week it would be um, couples together and then the next two following weeks we would take turns, it'd be a guy's night and then a girl's night. So if you're looking for a guy's group and a couple's group, we're going to try to combine both into one. And then the last week of the month would be more like a potluck, um, kids welcome. So we're kind of pushing this model because we have little ones and we know getting childcare can sometimes be hard. So by doing this model, you would actually only need to get childcare once a month, unless you don't hus trust your husband with your children and then it would be twice a month. <laughs> Depends on your home situation. Um, but that's kind of what we're going for. We are flexible on the time. We're thinking 6.30 would help because we're not going to do a dinner. We're just going to do some snacks and stuff. So that way you can feed the kids and either leave them with dad or mom or grandma and grandpa or bring them depending on what the week is. See, we have a plan. <laughs> Ryan, I like her, her uh, life group's a lot better than yours, unfortunately. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> That's right. Hi, I'm Mark Stephens, my wife, Tina, and we're planning to start on April 22nd on Sunday nights, and initially we're going to start at 6 o'clock, and I guess before we had a plan, but after hearing everybody else's plans, we might alter them, because there's some pretty good ones out there, but we think we're going to meet um, normally twice a week, the first week, week. twice a month. <laughs> okay. Excuse me? Yeah. No. That's, <laughs> That's right. Twice a month um, to start off, but you know we're going to be flexible too. Whatever works with people. The first um, week we'll dive deeper into the word, and with, whether it's with uh, Craig's sermons or another topic everybody would like to, to do, we'll we'll kind of play that by ear. Um, and then on the second week will be more of a social. Did I get that right? Social or service? See, I didn't quite quite right. Um, and then probably those uh, months that have five weeks, we'll try to do a specific um, service project, something uh, mission in the area that we can do. So again, April twenty second. And we live about five miles south of Shueyville. So we're going to come down to that area. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you, hosts. And again, that was the idea to put a name with a face, and the signups are in the back. We really hope that you will. Wait. Wait. <laughs> <clears throat> so that, again, this week and next week, those signups will be out, and we're hoping everybody will sign up for a host group and, and get a chance to at least experience this and realize that it may take a week or two to get this in, and you can see. The plans are very loose. It was truly God's plan and where these go and how these go. Don't worry, Mark. I've done it myself. It's not that hard to do. Um, Jolene has kind of indicated to it. Many of you may have seen as you walked in, but today is a slightly special day here at Prairie Bible Church. 50 years, 50 years and one day ago, a good friend of ours, a family member of ours, if you will, Francis, and Jolene Bowman tied the knot together. So we wanted to recognize them and try to embarrass them a little bit more for their anniversary. We, <laughs> you could. You could at least hold hands or something, right? They want to get a picture, right? <laughs> and, and after 50 years, we're not sure which one was able to put up with the other one longer, but we think it's been an awesome 50 years. Oh, well, there you go. That was the answer. I did want to, and uh, it was kind of made comment that there's a lot of people here. If the, the Bowman family would stand up just so we could recognize them too. It's not very often we have a 50th anniversary. Come on, stand up. We all know where you are. There you go. Stand up. Anybody related to Francis and Jolene? Thank you. And congratulations. Can I kiss the bride? Can oh. I kiss the bride? It's time to kiss the bride. Yeah. 
There are a couple other quick things I want to mention from a service standpoint um, before we move on with worship this morning. Um, on our uh, little uh, worship orders, there is a uh, website and our uh, Facebook page there. I want to encourage people to go to those, especially the website. Uh, from a service standpoint, again, just helping and supporting one another is including helping this church. Uh, we talk about it every Sunday, but the setup here and the teardown is amazing. The volunteers that help. And there is a link on the website to either volunteer to help set up chairs, set up a screen, to make coffee, to bring snacks. If you would go to that website, we would encourage you to try to do that at least once a month. And if we are all doing it, it's not an overload for anyone. Uh, set up, because we don't know how to necessarily publicize this, but we're going to start setting up at 8.30 on Sunday mornings. So if you can sign up on that website and then come to help out occasionally, it'll be an 8.30 start here at the church, and then we're ready for 9.30 service. So we hope that you can help us with that at some point. The other quick thing I just want to mention <clears throat> is a congregational meeting. Um, we've talked about, again, Prairie Bible Church is still six months old. It's very new. It's very young. And we want to make sure everybody knows and knows what's going on. May 3rd, it's a Thursday night at 7 o'clock. We're going to have a congregational meeting just to talk about the business. So we can save Sunday mornings for worship, but we want to make sure you get that on your calendar. With that, I'm going to ask if there's any prayer cards that we can pick up. And we'll pick those up now. And as we prepare for our second song, just a gentle reminder that Pastor Craig is by the door where you came in. And during this time, the song time, if you feel like you'd like to have a prayer with your pastor this morning, one-on-one, -on -one, he would love the opportunity to do that with you. So he'll be back there as we're praying. Megan's collecting the prayer cards. And with that, if you would stand for our second song, Lord, I Need You.
Please be seated. Good morning. I'm going to lead us in our time of community prayer. If you'll please pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in praise. We praise you as Emmanuel, God with us. We praise you as our creator. We praise you as the rock and redeemer who came and sent your son for a lost and lonely world. We praise you as the light in the darkness, the one that leads the way, that guides us along the path. We praise you as the great healer. And we praise you for all that you've given us this morning. We send up our thanks today. We thank you for this meeting space. We thank you for the open arms and the open doors of College Community. We thank you for their care and concern for us. And please help us to be great guests for them. Please bless them as they, the staff and the students who work here each and every day. Please help us through meeting here be a light so that we can share the hope that you give each and every one of us who know you and have brought your son Jesus into our heart. We also thank you for your holy word that's found in the Bible. Thank you for um, the words that you've given us there, and the joy and the hope that's found within. I pray that um, you help us see the, the need to bring that into our lives each day and make that accessible so the, those words make sense and the wisdom comes out and we are able to bring that into our hearts and then most importantly share it as you commanded us to do as we make disciples through your holy word. We lift up this morning um, prayer concerns that were shared. We pray for Sandy Points and we send a praise that thanks for um, a easy recovery so far in her cancer. We also pray for Leanne Westcott's brother, Richard, and he's back at work after a bad fall in November. Um, we share the joy and praise of the healing that's um, for Richard. Continued prayers for Aaron Sturtz. Um, prayer is proof of his, all his healing, uh, this prayer concern says, and he is a miracle. We pray for his family and his physicians and his therapists who are working around him to overcome um, his brain injury. We also pray for um, the weather and the snow today in the 70, this forecast on Friday. Um, this prayer concern suggests that perhaps you have some bipolar ways in the weather. And we just pray for safety for those who are on the road and patience for those who um, are anxious to get in the fields. And we know that through you and for you and in your very perfect timing, spring again will come. We pray these things in all of these things that also were not said that were in our hearts. Please um, take them and use us as you need for your word to spread throughout the world. In your name we pray. Amen. And kids, if you want to come up, I have a short children's message. Got a great crew. Just give you some time to get situated. All right. We are going to continue today, like we have been talking for the last many, many weeks about attributes of God. So, attributes are characteristics of God. And I have let you know a little secret. Um, I saw that Pastor Craig kind of borrowed our <laughs> he borrowed our theme. So. Every Gate sermon series begins with a children's message. Um, so Pastor Craig's talking about love this week and how that we know God um, through love and what love is for God. So I wanted to talk to you guys about love and a parental relationship. How do your parents love you? We're going to assume your parents love you. That's our assumption. How do they show that they love you? What are some ideas? Hugs, absolutely, physical affection. Weston? They take care of you. They take care of you, yes, absolutely. Anything else? How do our parents show us they love us? Addie? They you on tests. Yes, they're, they're your champion. They cheer for you. Absolutely. I'm going to get something out of my bag. Just a second. Okay, 
friends, for our um, audience members in the back who can't see this, what is in this jar? What is in there? Fruit snacks. A big thing of fruit snacks. This is full of fruit snacks. There's probably like 30 or 40 fruit snacks in there. And sometimes Henry, my Henry, he says, Mom, I want to have fruit snacks for lunch. <laughs> Do I love Henry? Yes. yes, I love Henry. I love Henry and I say, no, Henry, you can't have fruit snacks for lunch. Because you know what fruit snacks are full of? Sugar, sugar and, corn and corn syrup and red 40 and yellow 5 and all that crazy stuff. I said, no, Henry, you can't have fruit snacks for lunch. But do I love Henry? Yes. I love Henry and love, true love includes no. And that is so important for us to remember because our world, a lot of our world, thinks that love always means yes. But our God taught us that true love means no too. And where can we find more about what true love means? The in the Bible, exactly. And in the Bible, God loves you so much. He loves your body and your mind and your heart so much that he put some parameters, some boundaries out there for us, some things that he identified that said, you know what? That's not healthy for you. That's not healthy for your body. That's not healthy for your mind. That's not how I made you. And that's not healthy for your heart so that you can love others and love me too. So he said no to several things. And that is true love. Can we say a prayer together, please? Yes. Dear, Jesus, Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. And thank you for no every once in a while too. Thank you for no every once in a while too. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. If you guys want to go to serve uh, children's, go in that way. And the kids are going to head to the hallway and do a children's church as we are getting ready for our sermon. Real quick, as they are transitioning there, I just want to mention, um, again, as we talked about early in the service, that this worship service is truly a gift for all of us, those that are maybe the first-time attenders or the regular attenders. And at some point, there is a cost associated in finances. And if at some point you feel like God is telling you you want to contribute to the financial support of Prairie Bible Church, our Miracle Barn is in the back. And feel free at any time before or after services to just contribute into that uh, Miracle Barn the slot on the top. And we would love to have that. Unfortunately, our scripture reading ladies, um, Hannah and Paige, are both gone today. So you're stuck with me. <laughs> um, our scripture, which is printed on your uh, bulletin, is from 1 John 4, verse 7 through 8. Therefore, love one another, for love is from God. Those who do not love are not born of God, for God is love. Amen. Megan, I just wanted you to know that the difference between a parent and a grandparent is I'd give him the fruit snacks. <laughs> grandparents say amen. amen. That's right. That's right. Let's pray. As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. Lord, I know that we as human beings have been built to worship you. There is something inside of it, it's part of our DNA, that, re that cries out to worship. The problem that we have as human beings is that we don't, we don't know for sure that which we should be worshiping. There's so many substitutes for the true thing is guess what I'm talking about. There, we worship each other or we worship our possessions or we worship the world or the list could go on and on. But ultimately, the only one worthy of worship, the only thing worthy of worship is you, Jesus. And um, when we finally figure that out, 
when we finally choose to um, associate our lives and everything we do around that, that God-given privilege of worship, uh, it changes everything. It changes our priorities, our perspectives, um, the way we live, and the way we learn even. My prayer is, Jesus, that this morning as we begin or we continue, as Megan said, because she's right, this is a, a continuation of a series that she's been doing ever since I've been a part of Prairie Bible Church, as we uh, take this journey of trying to understand you better, my prayer is that your Holy Spirit will, will move in the midst of us and that we will lay a firm foundation that, will, um, that we will build upon in the coming weeks and years that will um, allow us to be a beautiful reflection of you in the way we live and the way we worship. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the anointing that your Spirit brings to us when we gather. And may you be glorified in all that is said and done. In Jesus' name, amen. Are you ready? Yes. Feeling awake, mentally alert? Yes. Fantastic. Okay. I want you to imagine a screen between you and I. On that screen, I want you to project a basic shape. Like a square, but not a square. Got it? Okay. Lock it in. Now I want you to project another shape and put that shape around the shape you already have. Okay. Excellent. Here's the fun part. Now concentrate and project that onto the back of my mind. Look right here. Open up your mind and send it to me. Okay, now I'm starting to feel it. It's a triangle inside a circle. No. It's not? No, I was thinking of an octagon inside a rectangle. Liar. All right, all right, you got me. Hmm, pretty good, huh? You got me and Rigsby the same way. How did you do that? Oh, that's nothing. That's just the calibration key to real mind reading. Now I have access to all your innermost thoughts. I am right. I'm serious. Okay. So what am I thinking right now? You're thinking I'm so glad Jane is joking around that he can't actually read my mind. No. Well, actually, yes, but, but not for the reason you think. What reason do I think? Never you mind. How many of you ever watched that show? Did you watch it? It's been off the air for a while. Well, for those of you that haven't watched The Mentalist, by the way, it was my favorite show on television when it was on. Uh, basically, the premise of the show was this. There was this guy, the main character is Patrick Jane, and um, he was a reformed con artist who was employed by the police to help create profiles of criminals that would help them to catch them, okay? And um, the fact of the matter is he tried to trick people in his days when he was a con artist. He tried to trick people into believing just what he was doing there, that he could read their minds. When in fact, he can't read people's minds any better than you can. What he had the uncanny ability to do is to pick up on clues that people were giving off. And he was putting those clues together and creating a profile. And that profile could help the police then to anticipate what the criminals were doing wrong and, and catch them. Okay? It's an awesome show, actually. Now, the reason why I bring this up to you is because I believe that all of us have the potential to do what Patrick Jane did in that show, The Mentalist. Now, did you, if you notice the uh, definition of the word mentalist, it was all negative because it was having to do with his former days as a con artist. But there are things about being a profiler that are good things about getting to know other people, potential that you and I have in our lives just like that. The difference between Patrick Jane and you and I is he knew what to look for. He knew that there were clues everywhere that you might consider uh, inconsequential or unimportant. But those clues, when they fit together, would create an understanding about people. 
I even believe that we have the ability, if we know what to look for, to create a profile or an understanding of God. And now you might say, that, that's fine. I mean, it's cool to know. We've been doing this with our kids now for, for a very long time, going over the attributes of God, getting to know who God is. And that's good and that's, that's fun. But what is the practical application of that? There's a reason why you as a Christian should get to know the nature of God. There's a reason why you as a Christian should get to know uh, the sovereignty of God. That you should, as a Christian should get to know the will of God. Because it says in Ephesians that as Christians, we are called to be a reflection of God to the world. Did you know that? That as a Christian, your job, actually it says in Ephesians chapter 5, that it's your job as a Christian to be an imitator of God or a reflection of God to the world. So that the world might get to know this same God, this same Jesus that you have fallen in love with. Because as you reflect Jesus to the world, as you reflect God to the world, it changes things. It gives the world hope. It gives the world light in the midst of darkness. That is the job of the church. So if we are to be a reflection of God, it's essential for us to know God, to know who God is, to know how God would act because of his nature. And that's the journey that I'm inviting you to go on with me in these next um, several weeks, probably all throughout the summer. We're going to be um, profiling God. We're going to be taking these attributes of God and building one upon the other to create an understanding of who God is and why God acts and reacts the way he does so that we can be a reflection of God to the world. So if you're ready, I invite you, let's profile. If you were with us last week on Easter, you may remember me saying this, that God's plan to save the world was all, could be boiled down to one thing. It was all about love, the word love. That's what Easter is all about, God saving the world because of love. But the love that God exhibits to us is different than the way the, girl, the world defines love. God's love is unexpected and unconventional, and it is equal parts grace and truth and forgiveness. Now, as human beings, most of us have a pretty good handle, even though we don't always recognize it, most of us have a pretty good handle on what um, forgiveness and truth are. But what is grace? The simplest definition that I have seen, ever seen, of the word grace is this. Grace is a free and undeserved gift. In other words, this love that God offers to us in the form of Jesus, this love is not something that you're worthy of, nor can you earn it. It just is, because that's who God is. I'll show you what I mean. 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. If you've got your Bibles, this is the time to pull them out. 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. Um, John, inspired by the Holy Spirit, says this to the Christians, to people like you and me. He says, therefore, love one another, for love is from God. Those that do not love are not born of God. Listen, for God is love. Right there, we have just uncovered the most important clue about the nature of God that it is possible to uncover. Everything that we will learn, everything that we can possibly know about God starts with that cornerstone truth that God is love. Now, some of you are sitting out there and you're going, okay, Craig, we get it. You've driven the point home. But listen to me. It's very important to drive that point home because many of us, when we think about God, the first word that comes to mind is not love. Have you ever heard anybody say, if God is so loving, why does he allow bad things to happen to people, right? I bet every single one of you know somebody who has said that who've asked that kind of question or some derivative of that question at some point in their lives. In fact, I'm willing to guess, because I'm a mentalist, <laughs> that every single one of you have asked that question too. If God is so loving, 
Why does he allow bad things to happen to people? Well, the truth of the matter is I could spend an entire year trying to unpack an answer to that question. But ultimately, it all boils down to something else that we learned last week or that we talked about last week. Bad things happen to people because of sin. Sin and the consequence of sin is real. We experience bad things all the time because sin and the consequence of sin is in the world. It's pervasive in the world. But that doesn't really answer the question, does it? If God is so loving, why does God allow the consequences of sin to hurt us? That's a good question. And the answer leads us to perhaps one of the most profound truths about God that you could ever know. We've already established that God is love, right? But we've also already established that in order to embrace that truth, we must trust. We must have faith that God is love. That God, we have, must have faith in God's promise that says all things work together for the good for those who love God and are called according to His purpose, right? Even when we don't understand, even when the things that are going on in our lives, we're thinking, I, I can't even imagine how that could possibly work my good or to anybody else's good. We must have faith in God's love to, to believe that. And you're just saying, well, I, I, that's, that's just asking too much of human beings. We human beings really don't have the capacity. When you look at all the bad things that are going on in the world, when I look at the bad things that are happening to me right now, I think it's just too much to ask that I would have to have that kind of blind trust and faith that God is love and that everything works together for the good when I can't see it myself. It's just too much to ask. Is that what you're thinking? Well, if you are thinking that, I'm going to tell you right now that you're wrong. The fact of the matter is this. Every single day, all around the world, human beings are experiencing that kind of faith, that kind of trust, are exhibiting that kind of faith and trust all the time. And it's not what you're thinking now, because I know what you're thinking. You're a pastor and you're supposed to say that. Yes, there are lots of Christians that have deeper faith than I have. I'm not talking about that. I'm not even talking about religion. I'm going to share with you a truth about trust that has nothing to do with religion. But I need to tell you a story. A long time ago, um, Lisa and I were, uh, got to spend the evening with some friends of ours who had a two-year-old little daughter. And this goes, uh, when you were talking today about the children's time, Megan, it reminded me of this story. It's been many, many years ago. Uh, we were hanging out with some friends of ours that we had known since high school. They had gotten married before we did. They had a two-year-old. Lisa and I had just recently been married, didn't have any children. We were just in the process of trying to formulate our own um, parenting style, if you will. So getting to hang out with our friends was a double blessing because not only did we get to hang out with our friends who we loved and enjoyed, but we got to um, kind of do some reconnaissance. You know what I mean? We got to pay attention to these people who were already parenting to see what we could learn about parenting, about what to do and what not to do. You know what I mean? So we were spending time that evening with our friends, and uh, we were having a great time, and as you can imagine, inevitably, the two-year-old did something to get in trouble, and the dad um, spanked her. Actually, he didn't spank her. He just swatted her, more of a diversion away from what it was that she was doing that was going to hurt her. And um, you would have thought that this kid was being murdered, screaming and yelling, and her heart was broken, and I, this is what I expected to happen. You've all lived that out in your own lives, haven't you? Okay? This is what I expected to happen. I expected that after dad swatted this little girl, 
she was going to go running to mommy, right? To get comfort. But you know what really happened? Dad swats her, and instead of running to mama, she reached up to him. And he picked her up, and he patted her on the back. She's still wailing and screaming like nobody's business. He pats her on the back, and he wipes away her tears, and she's huffing, and eventually she's settling down a little bit, and he kisses her on the cheek. And finally, she kind of gets back to that place where she's okay. And then she toddles off and does whatever a two-year-old does, you know. And everything was fine, completely forgot about what had just happened. But everything's good. When she toddles off, I look at my buddy and I say, dude, that completely surprised me. And he says, what do you mean? And I said, well, I expected after you swatted her, she was going to run to mama, right? To get comforted. And instead, she reached up and wanted you to hold her. It just surprised me. And he looks at me, and, he, and this is when he says one of the most profound things I've ever heard. And I don't even think he knew it. He looks at me, and he said, why would that surprise you? She knows I love her. She doesn't always understand. And she certainly doesn't always like it. But she knows. She knows I love her. Every day, we ask our children to have faith that we love them. When we say no, or when we discipline them for something. Right, Megan? Isn't that exactly what children's time was about today? Every day. And they're able to do it. Anybody have any idea what Matthew chapter 18 verse 3 says? Don't even need to tell you. You Tell me because I'll tell you. It says, in order for people like you and me, adults, to enter into the kingdom of heaven, we must become like the child, the children. God is love. Having the faith and the trust to embrace that truth changes everything. It changes um, the relationship that you'll have with Him. The understanding of who He is and who you were supposed to be in ways you never dreamed or imagined. Simply by knowing and embracing that God is love. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, um, it sounds so simple. And, and in all actuality, it is. But as human beings, as, as adults, we, we take the simple and we make it far more complex than it really is. And that's one of the reasons why you've given us children. It's just, as a reminder that it's possible to trust, to have faith, to believe, even when we don't understand. You've allowed us to live it ourselves and to hope for the very same thing that you're hoping for from us, that our children will believe that we love them because of everything else that we do and who we are to share that love, and to live that love in their lives. As we move through the coming weeks in creating this profile of who you are, Lord, may we never forget that ultimately all of it is built on that cornerstone that says God is love. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you, if you would, let's stand and join in our closing song together. Fountain
of every blessing to my heart to sing thy praise streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise teach me some melodious song sung by flaming tongues apart praise the mountain fixed upon it Mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, here by thy great help I've come. And I hope by thy good pleasure, safely to arrive at home. Jesus saw me when a stranger Wandering from the fall of God He to rescue me from danger Interposed His precious blood Thy goodness, like a feather, by my wandering heart to thee. I'm prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it. Seal it for Thy courts above. Seal it for thy comfort of Take and seal it Seal it for thy comfort of Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it Prone to leave the God I love Here's my heart, Lord Take and seal it Seal it for thy courts above. Amen. A couple of things before I say goodbye or thanks for coming. Um, please be praying about signing up for one of those life groups. Uh, you may have noticed up on the screen that there were some people listed there that didn't introduce themselves because we're in the process of still doing uh, actually, there's some people's names that weren't listed there who are in the process of being training, trained too. So we're going to have some new life groups starting as, times goes, as time goes by. But we think we've got plenty now for those of you that are interested. If you're praying about it, stop back there and, uh, and, and sign up. I think you'll never regret it. And by the way, stick around and uh, tell uh, Francis and Jolene happy 50th too. Amen? Amen? Amen. Thanks for coming, everybody. It's good to have you.